When the Galactic Council discovered why Earth is called a death world, they wished they hadn't. Jacob Gordon stood before the alien representatives gathered in the council chamber, their skeptical eyes dissecting the solitary human soldier. He knew the council saw Earth as an unpredictable variable, a world too dangerous to engage with, a death world. Commander Draco of the Wadi, the council's leader, made no attempt to hide his distrust. Humans are a warlike species, Draco declared, his scaled face a mask of contempt. Expanding your reach beyond Earth would jeopardize the fragile peace we've maintained for eons. Draco presented damning evidence of humanity's violent history. Footage of wars, natural disasters, and deadly predators played out on the chamber's screens, painting a grim picture of life on Earth. Jacob countered by highlighting how humans had turned adversity into strength. We've adapted and advanced, despite every challenge Earth has thrown at us, he argued. We come seeking cooperation, not conquest. It was then that the attack began. Explosions rocked the chamber as heavily armed assailants breached the council's security. Representatives fell, cut down by searing energy beams. Draco and Jacob barely made it to a secure room, forced to barricade themselves together as the invaders closed in. With no time for animosity, the human and Wadi fought side by side, Jacob's combat prowess and quick thinking earning Draco's grudging respect. A brief lull in the fighting allowed them to contact the Council fleet, only to learn the horrifying truth. An unknown empire had launched a full-scale invasion, seeking galactic domination. No help would come. Their only hope was to fight their way out and warn the galaxy. Draco hesitated, his distrust warring with the need for action. But as the building shook from another blast and alien war cries echoed from beyond their barricade, he met Jacob's determined gaze with a tense nod. Together they armed themselves for a desperate battle against overwhelming odds, the fate of the galaxy resting on an unlikely alliance between a Death World soldier and a Council commander. The true reason for Earth's deadly reputation was about to be unleashed upon the invaders. Jacob aimed down the sights of his pulse rifle, his finger tightening on the trigger as another Zorgon soldier rounded the corner. The alien's exoskeleton cracked under the barrage of plasma bolts, spilling viscous green ichor onto the polished floor of the council chambers. Beside him, Draco's energy blade hummed as it sliced through the air, severing a Zorgan's arm at the joint before plunging into its chest cavity. We need to get to the spaceport, Jacob shouted over the cacophony of battle. Draco nodded, his reptilian eyes narrowing as he surveyed the carnage. They fought their way through the twisting corridors, Jacob's reflexes and training melding seamlessly with Draco's superior Wadi technology. Zorgan warriors fell before them, their advanced weaponry no match for the combined skills of the human and Wadi champions. As they reached the spaceport, Jacob spotted a small, sleek vessel, a diplomatic shuttle. There, we can use that to escape. They sprinted across the hangar, dodging energy beams and pulse rounds. Jacob's heart pounded as they leaped into the shuttle, Draco's claws already flying over the controls. The engines roared to life, and they rocketed out of the hangar, leaving the besieged planet behind. In the void of space, the true scale of the invasion became apparent. A vast Zorgan armada stretched before them, its ships filled with weapons as they tore through the Council's flagships smoothly. Jacob's fingers danced across the communications array, his face growing pale as he intercepted transmissions detailing the Zorgon's plan. They're going to seize the hyperspace lanes, cut off every system. Earth, the colonies, they'll be next. Draco hissed, his claws digging into the shuttle's controls. We have to warn them. But even as they plotted a course for Earth, Jacob knew they couldn't break through the Zorgon blockade directly. His mind raced, searching for a solution. Wait, there's a human outpost in a nearby system, Sigma-9. They've been studying ancient alien tech. If there's anything that can stop the Zorgons, it'll be there. Draco hesitated, doubt flickering in his eyes. But as another council ship exploded in a burst of flame, he nodded. It's our best chance. They set course for Sigma-9, 
the shuttle's engines burning bright against the backdrop of the invasion. As they approached the outpost, a sense of dread settled in Jacob's gut. Zorgan ships swarmed the small station, their weapons firing relentlessly. Jacob and Draco docked the shuttle and raced into the outpost, pulse rifles at the ready. The station's personnel rallied around them, Jacob's presence a beacon of hope amidst the chaos. A familiar face pushed through the crowd. Admiral Hawkins, Jacob's mentor and friend. Jacob, thank God you're here. We've uncovered something. A weapon that could turn the tide. But we need more time to understand it. Jacob clasped the Admiral's hand, a sense of urgency washing over him. Then we'll buy you that time. Together, Jacob, Draco, and the outpost's defenders dug in, repelling wave after wave of Zorgon attackers. But even as they fought, a new threat emerged. Sleek, angular ships dropped out of hyperspace, emblazoned with the sigil of the Cox Imperium. The Cax warships loomed over the outpost, their weapons trained on the station's vital systems. A cold, imperious voice crackled over the comms. Humans of Sigma-9, you have uncovered that which belongs to the Cox. Surrender the weapon, or be annihilated. Jacob and Draco exchanged a tense glance the weight of the future of humanity pressing down upon them. The Zorgons closed in, the Cox threatened destruction, and the key to salvation lay tantalizingly out of reach. In that moment, Jacob knew they faced an impossible choice. Negotiate with the Cox and risk losing the weapon, or activate it themselves and potentially unleash an even greater danger. The fate of Earth, the colonies, and the entire galaxy hung in the balance as the seconds ticked away the enemy drawing ever closer. Jacob and Draco locked eyes, their decision made. We have to activate it, Jacob said. Draco nodded. The risk is great, but we have no choice. They rushed to join Admiral Hawkins and the research team. Alarms blared as Zorgon forces hammered the outpost's shields. On the main view screen, the Cox fleet loomed menacingly. The weapon's activation sequence is spread across multiple terminals, a frantic researcher explained. We need teams at each node. Jacob grabbed his pulse rifle. I'll take a squad to the lower levels. Draco, stay here and coordinate. As Jacob's team descended into the bowels of the station, the outer defenses failed. Zorgon troops poured in, their chitinous exoskeletons clattering against metal floors. Jacob's calm crackled. This is Draco. Quarks are demanding we stand down. Orbital strike imminent if we don't comply. Keep working, Jacob shouted back. We'll handle things down here. They fought through twisting corridors, lab equipment shattering under plasma fire. Jacob's team dwindled as Zorgon numbers swelled. In the control room, Draco's claws flew over alien interfaces. The Cax's ultimatum echoed, Cease activation or face annihilation. Suddenly, space warped inside the station. Cox strike troops materialized, weapons blazing. Jacob's team reached their activation node, but found themselves surrounded. We're pinned down, Jacob yelled into his comm. There's too many. He surveyed the area, a desperate plan forming. Plant charges on the support columns, he ordered his remaining squad. I'll hold them off and activate the node. Jacob stepped into the corridor alone, his rifle spewing death. Zorgon after Zorgon fell, but more kept coming. His armor cracked under return fire. Blood trickled down his arm. The charges detonated. The station groaned as entire sections collapsed. Jacob stumbled to the node, fingers flying over alien controls. Node activated, he gasped into his comm. In the control room, Draco roared in triumph. We have full control. The ancient weapon surged to life. Reality itself seemed to warp and twist. Zorgon and Cox troops alike screamed as their technology failed, their bodies contorting. Both invading forces retreated in panic, leaving destruction in their wake. But as the dust settled, Jacob and Draco realized the true cost. Bodies of friends and foes littered the halls. Entire sections of the station were open to vacuum. Warning klaxons blared. The station systems were failing, the weapon's power beyond their control. We have to go, Draco hissed. Now! 
They sprinted for the hangar bay, rounding up survivors. As they piled into the few functional ships, Jacob looked back at the pulsing core of the alien weapon. The small fleet of escape craft rocketed away from the dying station. Behind them, space itself seemed to ripple and tear. As they cleared the weapon's radius, Jacob turned to Draco. Both knew that in saving themselves, they may have doomed the galaxy to an even greater threat. The escape pods rocketed away from the imploding station, carrying Jacob, Draco, and the survivors into the void of space. Jacob's hands gripped the controls, his squeezing hard with tension as he navigated through the spatial distortions left in the wake of the weapon's activation. We're clear of the danger zone, Jacob announced, his voice hoarse from the smoke and strain of battle. Draco's scaled fingers danced across the comms panel. I'm picking up signals from a nearby fleet, human and wadi signatures. The small flotilla of escape craft limped towards the rendezvous point. As they approached, Jacob saw a hodgepodge of ships, sleek wadi cruisers interspersed with bulkier human frigates. The survivors were brought aboard, met by a mix of concerned faces and wary glances. In the command center of the lead ship, Jacob and Draco huddled with the fleet's leadership. Tactical displays showed the Zorgon and Cox forces in retreat, their formations in disarray. The weapon's activation has bought us time, a grizzled human admiral stated. But our long-range scouts report both sides are regrouping. They'll be back, and in greater numbers. Jacob's mind raced. We can't fight them both. Not conventionally. He paused, weighing his next words carefully. We need to use the weapon as a deterrent. Force them to the negotiating table. Draco hissed, his reptilian eyes narrowing. You suggest we threaten to unleash that chaos upon the galaxy? Do you see another choice? Jacob countered. It's that or total war. Silence fell over the room. Finally, Draco nodded. Very well, but where do we go from here? Jacob pulled up a star chart. There's a remote system far from established territories. We can study the weapon there, prepare our defenses. As the fleet jumped to hyperspace, Jacob felt the weight of responsibility settle on his shoulders. They were gambling with forces beyond their comprehension. Days later, they emerged in orbit around a nondescript gas giant. Its largest moon glowed with the telltale signs of a habitable atmosphere. As they approached, however, their sensors picked up an unexpected reading. Sir, a sensor operator called out, I'm detecting a structure on the surface. It appears to be a human research base. Jacob and Draco exchanged surprised glances. They hadn't expected to find anyone out here. Upon landing, they were greeted by a team of haggard-looking scientists led by Dr. Elena Reeves, the base's director. In a secure briefing room, she laid out their findings. The weapon you activated, Reeves explained, gesturing to holographic schematics. It's older than we could have imagined, created by a long-extinct race to manipulate the very fabric of space-time. Jacob leaned forward, studying the intricate designs. Can we control it? Reeves' expression darkened. That's the problem. Its activation at your outpost has rendered it highly unstable. If we can't contain or deactivate it soon, the resulting spatial disruption could destroy entire star systems. The room fell silent as the implications sank in. They had a tiger by the tail, and letting go wasn't an option. How long do we have? Draco asked, his voice unnaturally calm. Days, a week at most, Reeves replied. Jacob stood, his eyebrows furrowed with dedication. Then we'd better get to work. Draco, coordinate with the scientists. Find a way to stabilize that thing. I'll oversee our defenses. The Zorgan and Quox won't be far behind us. As if on cue, alarms blared. A technician's voice crackled over the comms. Long-range probes detecting multiple contacts entering the system. Zorgon and Quax signatures confirmed. Jacob rushed to the command center, barking orders. All hands to battle stations. Deploy our fighters for a defensive screen. We need to buy time. The next hours passed in a blur of frantic activity. Jacob coordinated the combined human and Wadi forces, repelling probing attacks from Zorgon and Cox scout ships. All the while... Draco worked tirelessly with the research team, 
searching for a solution to their impending doom. Just as their defenses began to falter, Draco burst into the command center. We found something, a rare isotope in the moon's crust. We believe we can use it to channel and stabilize the weapon's energy. What's the catch? Jacob asked, knowing there had to be one. Draco's scales rippled with tension. We'll have to overload the containment reactors. It's risky, but it's our only shot. Jacob nodded grimly. Do it. I'll organize mining teams to extract the isotope. What followed was a desperate race against time. Jacob led squads to defend the mining operations, fighting off waves of Zorgan and Cox troops that had landed on the moon's surface. The air filled with the scream of energy weapons and the acrid smell of ozone. Finally, as the main Zorgon and Quox fleets entered the system, Draco and his team made their move. The isotope was fed into the weapon systems, and for a heart-stopping moment, nothing happened. Then, reality itself seemed to bend. Spatial distortions rippled out from the moon, engulfing the enemy fleets. Ships tumbled out of formation, their systems scrambled by the weapon's awesome power. Taking advantage of the chaos, Jacob led a counterattack, driving back the invaders. As the dust settled, he opened a channel to both the Zorgan and Cox commanders. This is Jacob Gordon of Earth, he announced, his voice steady despite his exhaustion. You've seen what this weapon can do. Stand down now and agree to negotiations, or we'll have no choice but to use its full power. For several tense moments, there was no response. Then, one by one, the enemy ships powered down their weapons. They had no choice but to acquiesce. As the ceasefire took hold and tentative peace talks began, Jacob allowed himself a moment of relief, but it was short-lived. Alarms blared from the weapons containment facility. The stabilization is only temporary, Draco reported, his voice grim. We've bought ourselves some time, but if we don't find a permanent solution soon... Jacob nodded, understanding the unspoken threat. They had averted one crisis, only to face an even greater one. The weapon that had saved them might yet destroy them all. Jacob's eyes scanned the war-torn lunar landscape, his breath ragged in the thin atmosphere. Acrid smoke billowed from craters where cities once stood. Beside him, Draco's scaled form tensed, reptilian eyes narrowed against the devastation. We need to secure the weapon site, Jacob rasped, hefting his battered rifle. What's left of it anyway? They picked their way through the rubble passing the broken bodies of human, Wadi, Zorgon, and Cox alike. The air crackled with residual energy, raising the hair on Jacob's arms. At the epicenter of the destruction, they found a yawning chasm where the ancient weapon had stood. Reality itself seemed to waver at its edges, the laws of physics still reeling from the controlled rupture. Any sign of Dr. Santos? Jacob asked, knowing the answer but needing to hear it. Draco shook his head. Mandibles clicking softly. The vortex consumed her entirely. Her sacrifice saved us all. A distant rumble drew their attention. Through gaps in the settling dust, they saw the remnants of the Zorgon and Cox fleets plummeting from orbit, reduced to twisted hulks of metal. Command! This is Gordon! Jacob called into his comm. The weapon is neutralized, repeat. The weapon is neutralized. What's our status? Static crackled, then a voice broke through. Gordon, this is what's left of Central. We're getting reports from across the system. The Zorgon and Quax forces are in full retreat. Their empires are collapsing. Jacob exchanged a weighted glance with Draco. The scale of their victory, and its cost, was almost beyond comprehension. Sir, a voice called out. A battered squad of human and Wadi soldiers approached, supporting wounded comrades. We've got survivors from the diplomatic contingent. They're requesting to speak with you both immediately. In a makeshift command post, Jacob and Draco faced the haggard representatives of the galactic powers. The Zorgan emissary's exoskeleton was cracked and oozing, while the Cox diplomat's usually pristine robes hung in tatters. This changes everything, the Zorgon hissed, mandibles twitching. Our fleets are decimated. Our homeworlds are in chaos. The cax nodded, its gelatinous form rippling with agitation. 
We have no choice but to sue for peace. The balance of power has shifted irrevocably. Jacob leaned forward, his voice steady despite his exhaustion. Then let's talk terms. We have a chance to reshape the galaxy, to build something better from the ashes of this conflict. As negotiations began in earnest, Draco pulled Jacob aside. The humans have proven themselves today, the Wadi said quietly. Your species' capacity for sacrifice, for survival against impossible odds, it's unlike anything we've seen. Jacob nodded, the weight of responsibility settling on his shoulders. We come from a world that forged us in fire, he said. Now we have to use that strength to forge a future for all of us. Outside, the first ships of the relief effort began to descend through the moon's atmosphere. The long, arduous task of rebuilding lay ahead. But as Jacob watched humans and Wadi working side by side, he knew that together they could face whatever challenges the cosmos had in store. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.